friends. Today we're going to talk about compassion and we're going to look specifically at Pharaoh's daughter and learn how compassion should look in our lives. If you're new to my channel, my name is Raquel and I am here to encourage you through the Word of God to be godly women, wives, and mothers. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get immediately updated as soon as I upload a new video. So looking at the story of Pharaoh's daughter is really interesting. It's in Exodus chapter 2, and it's only five verses, verses 5 through 10. And we see in the backstory that the children of Israel, the Hebrew people, were in slavery to the Egyptians. And the Pharaoh at the time was afraid that they would become populous and overtake them and make the Egyptians their slaves. So he started to oppress them greatly. And one of the commandments that he gave his people, and I want to make this clear, he gave this commandment to the people, not his guards, although they would be included, not his army, although I'm sure they would be included too, but to his people, the neighbors, the ones who were intermarried and family, that if they saw a male child born to a Hebrew family, they were to take that child and throw him into the river. With that in mind, we see that a Levite man and a Levite woman, both Hebrews, came together in marriage, conceived a son, and she, the woman, hid the son for three months. But after three months, she couldn't hide him any longer. So she placed him in an ark and put slime and pitch around it to seal it. And she set it in the river. And her sister Miriam watched to see what would happen. And that's where we pick up in Exodus chapter 2, verse 5. Pharaoh's daughter comes down to the water with her maiden so that she can be washed and cleaned. And she sees this ark in the, the flags of the river. And she tells her handmaidens to go get it for her. And the verse six is so profound. It says, and when she had opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. And then following Miriam comes to her and says, would you like me to go get a Hebrew woman who can nurse him for you? And Pharaoh's daughter says, go. And so she does and brings that Moses' own biological mother who is paid by Pharaoh's daughter to take care of him until he is weaned and can come back to be Pharaoh's daughter's son. And it's, what strikes me about compassion is that it is an action. It is an act of kindness. It goes beyond, oh, I feel so sorry for this person, sympathizing or empathizing, or I wish I could do something for them. It is seeing someone in distress, seeing someone in, discouraged or poor and in need of help or going through a difficult time or whatever it might be, weak in the spirit, whatever it might be, seeing their suffering and doing something, doing an act of kindness out of love to alleviate their pain and their suffering. The Hebrew word for compassion is actually from the same root word as the womb. And you'll see in scripture that it talks about like the womb of compassion. This is such an interesting comparison because if you think of what the womb does, it gives life, it nourishes, it gives protection to the weak, and it gives independence to the strong. And isn't that what compassion does? It seeks to give life to a hopeless situation. It is an action. We see this many times in the Gospels when it says that Yeshua, Jesus, had compassion on the people. And so he healed them. And so he, etc. Compassion is something that we do to help another person. You know, naturally with this connection to the womb, I think of my own children. Am I showing my own children compassion? Part of compassion is forbearance. And forbearance is restraint or self-control. When my children do some, does something that upsets me, am I just unleashing my fury and my wrath and my disappointment or whatever emotion I'm feeling on them? Or am I reigning in my self, reigning in my feelings, my emotions, practicing self-control by the Spirit, and instead lovingly 
correcting them, calmly disciplining them, just like the scripture says in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, that it is God's compassion, his goodness, his loving acts of kindness that lead us to repentance. That's going to work with my kids, too. Point out here that she was directly going against the commandments of her father. Her father was Pharaoh. And so she was putting her life at great risk in this by doing this act of kindness. Also, it cost her something. She paid Moses's biological mother to care for him. It was not free for her to care for Moses. And also, we don't read any benefit to her in the text. We don't see any reason why she would have benefited from this. And that's a huge point about compassion. Compassion, compassion is not self-seeking. It's not looking out for your good. It's looking out for someone else's good. And I think of this in relationship to marriage, how, you know, our husbands come in and they might be exhausted from it. My husband comes in and he comes home exhausted from work and his feet might hurt and my feet might hurt, but how can I have compassion on him? Instead of going into this negativity comparison game of your feet hurt, my feet really hurt. Let me just show compassion and help him out. And the scriptures repeatedly tell us to look for the poor, the widows, the orphans, to seek them out and to do them good because it's not about us. We're not doing it to make ourselves comfortable. We're doing it as unto God, like it says in Matthew chapter 25 regarding the, what you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do it to me. We're doing it unto God. We're reflecting his compassion. And then furthermore, I just wanted to mention that this is not convenient. Being compassionate is not convenient. One of the Jewish sages um, commented that Proverbs chapter 31, verse 15, is specifically referencing Pharaoh's daughter. And it says, she rises while it is still night and provides provisions for her household, the daily fare of her maids. I've always thought of the scripture in terms of like she works hard. But when you put it in connection to Pharaoh's daughter, She's rising to the occasion. She's rising to show compassion in an inconvenient situation to herself. She wasn't going out to the river to save a Hebrew child. She was going out to the river to bathe. And then she shows compassion. And she provides a life to someone who is basically condemned to death. And that, we see this also with the Good Samaritan in the, in the apostolic writings, in the Gospels. He was on his way to do business when he saw the person in need who had been attacked and left for dead. And he still stopped and he still showed compassion. Compassion is not something that can wait. If you see a need or if you're looking for a need and you see one, we should act on it because the need cannot wait. Our business can wait. What we're doing can wait. But the need for compassion cannot. So I just want to encourage you to seek out who you can bless. Look for those around you, the poor, the widows, and orphans, but also just your own children, your own husbands, the own, your own guests that you bring into your home, and seek a way that you can help them in their need. When they're weak, perhaps you can be strong. When they are suffering, perhaps you can bring comfort and show the compassion of God. Because as Pesach, Passover, is coming upon us in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I'm remembering God's redemption, and it just, why? Why did he redeem us? He redeems us because he is compassionate. And if I want to share with other people about God's redemption, I also need to show and reflect the compassion from whence that redemption came. So I pray that this blessed you. If it did, please like it, subscribe, and comment to this video if you have any thoughts to share. I would love to hear from you. Thank you, ladies. God bless you, and bye-bye.